Hey everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm going to be playing Rust with the Steam Controller. Now, my main reason for choosing uh, Rust as a game to test out with the Steam Controller is, uh, as you can see, when uh, navigating Steam Big Picture Mode with the Steam Controller, <coughs> excuse me, and viewing Rust from your uh, Steam library, you're giving this notification that says keyboard slash mouse required. This is because Rust is not designed to be played with controller at all. So Steam flat out recommends that you use a keyboard or mouse. So in other words, using a Xbox 360 gamepad or PS3 gamepad is or a gamepad similar to that is pretty much out of the question. So for a game that so heavily depends on a keyboard and mouse, how well does the Steam controller work with it? Now I've already got the game loaded up. Um, let me just go ahead and switch the uh, using OBS currently I have to switch what the recording is on okay there we go so yeah as you can see here uh, I'm inside of rust and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open the steam overlay and show you guys my controller configuration <coughs> now this was a pain in the ass to configure just because there's so much uh, functions for rust and I wanted to do what I call a no compromise uh, configuration which is where there is no key spared make sure that everything is available for use on the controller um, so as you can see I am using the left trackpad to move and I'm gonna explain why in a little bit when I get in the game because I actually did sort of get used to the left trackpad for movement before I was kinda like um, analog stick only but uh, I, I did sort of get used to the left trackpad I'm gonna tell you guys how I did that uh, end game and I use the left uh, analog stick for switching items in my hotbar menu this is probably the biggest thing I had troubles with was uh, with the hotbar menu um, you know just selecting items in your uh, little hotbar at the bottom there at the bottom of the screen um, I do use the uh, stick for that um, you know left and right goes forward and back in the inventory and up goes to the first item and down goes to the very last item um, that's just sort of for quicker navigation. And then we have uh, the, the face buttons here are just sort of mapped to random functions. Like we have reload, use, map, and uh, flashlight just because, you know, just make sure we got everything uh, on there. Um, no particular reason why I ch chose these, just because, you know, I kind of had everything else used for something else. So I just slapped all the miscellaneous functions on there. Um, and for the right trackpad, we of course have mouse aiming, click it in for use, and double tap for reload. I do have the uh, yeah, sensitivity up about right here. I do uh, in the in-game sensitivity for Rust I have it set to full. It's still a little bit slow but I kinda like my uh, aim to be a little bit slow. Um, I also have trackball and acceleration off. Some people really like that but you know it's not really for me. Um, I have to... Uh, medium's fine. And this is the, my uh, double tap duration. I wanted to make sure you know that I have to hit the double tap really fast. Um, I also have smoothing off because with high smoothing, I don't know, it's just kind of uh, it's kind of too sluggish, right? So I have that on there, so you know, it's I can uh, I find that it's better aiming in my opinion. Um, and I also have double tap beep on. This is how I test it out with my threshold for the double tap duration, because you know I'd be playing and I'd just sort of be doing swipes like this, and I'd hear beeping a lot, and that's how I know okay, I need to turn down the double tap duration, um, you know, because I don't want to accidentally reload. Um, I have, you know, these are standard, you know, inventory is uh, the select and start is the uh, escape key. Um, and we have the left bumper here, set a uh, left grip, excuse me, set to crouch and the right grip, select a head look. Now I actually have gyroscope enabled whenever I click right grip and that's so that um, I can use the gyroscope in conjunction with uh, the head look and that's a really useful feature. I really wanted to make sure that I did not miss out on a uh, head look because what, I, what I'm going to show you guys in a second is this is what I'll usually do. I'll be mining something and I'll use head look to quickly survey the area um, and it's a really useful feature and it works really really well with the uh, uh, gyroscope controls in my opinion. It's just so much quicker because usually like you would have to use the aiming and as you can see using standard trackpad it kinda you gotta do a couple swipes just to sort of get there whereas with the gyroscope I could quickly snap it. Um, 
Nothing to notice. Uh, one thing to notice about the gyroscope controls, I do have the sensitivity up fairly high, and I have acceleration on high. So that way, if I want to look completely behind me, I can just do that. Make quick, small movements, and that'll look behind me, so I don't have to sort of drag it all away. I can just do one quick snap, and I'm, my view is pretty much behind me. Um, so yeah, that's just really useful. Um, and I have a, the standard, you know, jaw uh, gyro steering on yaw, you know, all standard stuff. Uh, I have a uh, haptic intensity on medium, you know, other than, other than the uh, acceleration and sensitivity, it's really standard. I have reload mapped to here just because I, I kind of have a bit too much keys to map to reload. You know, I have this for reload, double tap that, and X, uh, all for the same function. I should really look into, you know, replacing maybe this key with a more useful one. Um, and I have jump map to here. I have uh, this map to right mouse and this to left mouse, which is pretty standard. I have soft press map to aim as well because uh, sometimes, you know, I just like to be able to do this and aim because I do kind of find that holding the left trigger down completely is a little bit uh, straining and a bit uncomfortable, especially when you're holding the uh, left grip and then moving with this. It's just a bit too much. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to sort of uh, mess around and show you guys uh, me playing with the controller. One thing I forgot to mention was if you look over here on the left trackpad, click in his voice. That was originally Sprint until I found out there's a function, if we go under advanced settings, called outer ring binding. Um, and what this is, this is a uh, function that allows you to assign a key for when your thumb goes out of the sort of outer ring of the left trackpad. This is super useful because as you can see, I have that mapped to Sprint. So when you see here I'm walking right now, all I have to do is move my thumb up and I'm sprinting. And if I want to stop walking again, I just quickly do that. It is incredibly useful. Um, and the main reason I did this binding was because I think it works very well and also because I want to be able to use voice chat. So I can just click in this and then there you go. And uh, it's not, I don't find it awkward to move while voice chatting. As you can see, it's just very, uh, very useful. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's every single key covered. Like I can head look, I can walk around, I can, you know, open the inventory here and, and just, you know, sort of scroll through everything. And if I want to build something, I can fairly easily. Um, and yeah, just everything works incredibly well. Um, the only, like I said, the only real negative side I would say to my configuration is changing items in my hotbar. Because uh, one important thing, one important function in Rust a lot of people don't talk about is holstering your weapon. Because oftentimes you'll find people and they'll have, you know, better weapons than you and, you, you know, you want to be friendly so you try to holster your weapon. And to do that, you have to hit the uh, hotbar item twice. So for instance, see my torches in two, I would have to hit two on my keyboard and then hit it again to holster that. Um, and I, you can't really do that with the binding I have. You can just sort of switch between weapons and if I want to holster my weapon I have to select either my first or last and hit it again. Um, and that did get me killed at one incident because uh, I had like a gun mapped to my um, one binding so I did this and I went to holster it real quick but as soon as they saw the gun they just shot me dead. Uh, so that was an unfortunate scenario. Um, but it's a minor thing. Like I, I guess I would just recommend mapping something to your last binding, the last uh, part on your hotbar here, something that isn't lethal. Um, like this wood for instance um, yeah you know it works good uh, it's just uh, it's you know I can play rust comfortably um, from a good bit away and you know and like I said if you look at the game it flat out says keyboard and mouse required yet it works fantastically well for the steam controller as you can see I'm just sort of quickly grabbing stuff looking around very quickly sprint going into sprint instantaneously you know there's like no compromise and functionality when playing with the steam controller over a mouse and keyboard now um, I did create a second binding as well so I'm gonna go ahead and load that binding up I'm gonna explain that binding to you as well uh, as you can see here it is called the the one I'm using right now is burritos no compromise rust version 2 <coughs> excuse me but if we go to version 1, this is my sort of other configuration that I experimented with just last night, actually. Everything's identical except the left stick moves 
and if we move the left stick all the way to the outer uh, edge it begins spread so basically you know we've swapped what movement is and if we click down on this that's for voice of course um, and the main reason I did that is because the left trackpad has this feature if we look called touch menu and what I've done and what this basically is is you as soon as you touch sort of the left trackpad a menu comes up and uh, basically the, the menu is just a sort of uh, I don't know how to really explain it other than it's just sort of a menu of uh, functionality like for instance um, you see here when I bring up the menu we have one over here and um, you can assign what you want that one to do for instance I can say open my inventory or it's uh, bind it to a numeric key or bind it to a key on my keyboard um, and this is really useful for games like this where you have tons of things in your hotbar or just sort of tons of functions you want to do for instance I have uh, a key binding here uh, for console so if I want to open the console I just hit my left trackpad go down here click on it and bam it's open and closed um, or if I want to open my inventory I just drag it down bam you know there you go inventory open or I can you know quickly go to a uh, bug file bug report and I can uh, switch between weapons and my uh, items in my hotbar fairly quickly yeah it's very very useful the only really negative side I had about it was the main reason I don't use this configuration as my main is because I don't like the analog stick um, with the outer rim binding because it is useful you know doing this just having to do this to sprint but I often find that I'll kind of just sprint randomly when I'm not trying to just because I, when I play games with an analog stick I always go to the outer edge that's just you know how I always played uh, first person shooters and just any kind of game with an analog stick so I often find myself sprinting when I'm not really trying to um, it's it's kind of annoying so that's why I've uh, I mainly used the other binding where I uh, well, almost threw my rock there you don't want to do that <laughs> That's why I use my uh, other binding where the left trackpad is movement because I just find that that, in my opinion, works better. But other than that, yeah, it's it's practically the same. Um, I mainly made this configura configuration just for people who aren't used to the left trackpad or someone who just wants sort of a better way of opening the menu. If you see here, this these all have icons. That's because if you go into the touch menu settings, you can go to select icon here and you can actually select... Uh, which icon you want in the touch menu. I don't know how to turn off icons. Um, once you select one, I don't know how to get rid of it. Um, so yeah, like I, I actually wanted to sort of blank these, but I can't. It sort of seems that once you select one, um, it's sort of stuck like that, but whatever. Uh, well, another negative uh, criticism I have about uh, Steam big Picture Mode in general is if the game is not uh, sort of, uh, what's the word? If the game if the uh, game sort of fluctuate in frames per second uh, the overlay experience is can be quite terrible like for instance you see here rust isn't exactly the uh, most optimized game you know it's a unity game and it's still in uh, alpha state as you can see it's a little sluggish the frame rate isn't a perfect 60 um, and this is really bad if you're trying to do things like use the uh, in-game like chat for instance like you see here I'm moving my, uh, I open the in-game keyboard, I'm going to sort of type a message to hear if it works, if I can get it to work, uh, T, I think that's the key I'm looking for, okay, it's not one of the work right now, so here's what we'll do, we'll do that, and as you can see, because the game isn't running at a smooth 60, the overlay seems to be tied to the game's frame rate, because uh, I'm sort of moving my thumbs across the uh, track, the, um, overlay keyboard and it's very sort of sluggish it's not as smooth as when you're just sort of typing when you're playing like if you're playing a, a smooth 60 frames per second game like I don't know Team Fortress 2 uh, you can it's very it feels very smooth when you sort of move your thumbs across but here it just it just feels really sluggish and it kind of makes it harder to just type like if I want to type uh, you know hello it just doesn't feel as uh, quick and snappy as it usually does so that is sort of a very negative thing that the um, game's frame rate appears to be uh, appears to affect the overall performance of the steam overlay that's a really negative trait but whatever so yeah earlier I showed you guys that I usually use uh, the left trackpad as movement at first when I first did this configuration I had a lot of trouble using the left trackpad I just f found it hard to uh, get a feel for where my thumb was 
And I did two things to solve that issue. Uh, one is I enabled haptic intensity and I put it on high. And uh, what that does is every time your sort of thumb hits a certain point, you get this little like thump. You know, like if, when you're when you go all the way in the top, you can feel the haptics. When you go diagonal, you feel the haptics left. And there's just these sort of you know, and that's a really good way to tell where your uh, thumb is when you reach a certain point of movement. Um, and then you can just sort of stop. Like if you want to go diagonal, you feel that little haptic and then you stop. It's very nice. Um, and another thing I did, and this one really, really helped and overall got me very uh, used to the uh, left trackpad's movement, is we toggle, we toggle controller HUD on. And what this does is anytime you sort of uh, use the left trackpad or if you press a button, these sort of uh, commands show up and it lets you know basically what you're doing. Um, and this is really useful for trackpad movement because as you can see when I move my thumb across the left trackpad we have this little indicator to show where our thumb is and this is so good for using uh, the left trackpad as movement because it lets you sort of visualize uh, where your thumb is and it makes learning uh, the left trackpad so much easier like this is sort of how I started off um, you know I did I did the uh, overlay and I just sort of messed around for a bit and got a feel for uh, you know where everything was and then once I sort of uh, got used to using the left trackpad as movement I of course toggled the HUD off and now I'm able to sort of uh, make precise movements without um, needing the uh, heads up display controller heads up display and yeah overall like I said uh, this game the steam controller works very well for this game uh, surprisingly I wish I had a gun or something but you know uh, this is unfortunately one of those games where you have to put a lot of time in before you really get anything like that so um, I'm not really able to demonstrate um, how well uh, aiming and stuff works. I have uh, used a weapon before in this game with the Steam Controller and the Steam Controller aims about as well as you'd think. You know, it's it's definitely better, like I said before uh, in my previous videos, it's better than using a gamepad but not quite as good as a mouse and keyboard. It's a good sort of in-between. Um, but yeah, you know, that's Rust. It plays very comfortably with the Steam Controller. If you want to play, you know, PC, if you want to play Rust comfortably on your couch or on your chair or whatever, um, and you don't want to be hunkering over your chair. Uh, this is the perfect controller for that. It is a, joy a very enjoyable experience. Um, overall, if you're like a serious roster uh, and you really, really need the best aim and stuff like that, then you know maybe this, the Steam controller is not really the best option for that. You know, nothing can beat mouse and keyboard for uh, performance. But uh, yeah, you know, if you want to play, if you're just sort of a casual player and you want to um, you know play rust sort of comfortably then yeah this this is really in my opinion the uh, best way to do that so as you can see you know I, I just click on things and it's very sort of easy to select things you know if, oh, I want to make a spear click on it craft you know hit select to drop the menu and it's just uh, it just works very very well uh, there's a drawing of a penis wow <laughs> I'm surprised it took me that long to run into one of those uh, yeah that's the rust community for you um, so yeah, there you go. Um, that's Rust. It's definitely a very enjoyable experience with the Steam Controller, in my opinion. Um, like I said, you know, the game flat out says, okay, you can't use this, you know, this mouse and keyboard is required. And yet, you know, here I am playing the uh, game with a controller comfortably. And as you can see, it works very, very well. Um, so anyway, yeah, that has been uh, me uh, playing the Steam Controller with Rust. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and Keith signing out.